Hey, Dustin here from Retro Supply, and today I'm going to show you how to roughen the edges of your work using Photoshop brushes and one of my favorite things in the world, layer masks. So we're going to start with a piece of work that's really clean, it looks like this, and by the time we're done with it, it's going to look approximately like this. So let's get started. So step one is to place your work in Photoshop. So I'm a big fan of building my work out in Illustrator. The reason I just feel comfortable there. I feel more comfortable about scaling things. I feel less committed to a size like you are in Photoshop because it's raster based. So I do most of my work in Illustrator and then I bring it in Photoshop. If you're starting in Photoshop, you don't have to do this step. But I'm going to first remove this eagle and I'll show you why in a minute. And then I'm going to select all of this and I'm just going to press Command C and then I'm going to go and place it in Photoshop as a smart object so I can adjust it later if I need to. Press OK and then with Shift and Alt held down I'm going to adjust the size and the reason I hold those down is because that constrains the dimensions and it helps to keep it centered. So I like how that looks and I'm going to rename this because we like to keep our files organized so we can find them easily. So I'm just going to name this Postal Service. And then let's go back and grab this eagle. And the reason we are keeping this eagle in a separate layer is it's kind of like a stamp on top of it. So when we're adding textures, we might want to add a different texture to this eagle. And if it's on the same layer, we can't do that. And it ends up just looking more flat and less like it would really be layered if you actually had something that said Postal Service that was printed with an eagle stamp on top of it. So that looks good, and I'm going to set that to multiply. Love doing that too. I'm a big fan of multiply and linear burn. So now that we have everything ready in Photoshop, step two is to download your ABR brushes. And that's just a fancy way to say download your Photoshop brushes. They're called ABR brushes in most cases. So let's download those right now. Now, like most things in Photoshop, there is more than one way to skin a cat, but how I like to do it, and it might not be the most efficient way, but this is just how I do it, and I like doing it this way, um, is go to Presets, Preset Manager, and then I'm under Brushes, and then I can just say Load, and then you wanna navigate to the free brush set that I provided for you, and they're called the Edge and Fold Brushes.abr. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to click Open, and just like that, they've been added to my brush collection. Now to use these, you'll find them when you click on your brush here. If you go to this brush preset picker panel, you can see them here and you can select them with ease. Now step three is to create a layer mask. And the reason we use layer masks is because they're non-destructive. So we can add texture, we can add all these you know, unique things to the layer. And if we decide we don't like something, if a client decides something's over the top or they don't like the texture or they want us to tweak it, it's non-destructive. So we can easily go in and basically paint things back into place that we've hidden. So creating a layer mask is really easy. We can just select the layer we want to add the layer mask to. So in this case, I'm selecting Postal Service. And then we just go down here and we click on Add Layer Mask. And you can see as soon as I did that, this white box appears and that's the mask. Right now it's blank. And the reason is because white reveals and black conceals. So we're going to want to make sure that we have our fill color set to black because when we, what we're essentially doing is we're painting on this layer mask and anywhere we paint black onto it is going to hide things on this layer. So I'm going to add a layer mask to the eagle as well. We have it set to black. And now we can do step four, which is to stress the edges with the brushes that we just downloaded. So with our paintbrush tool selected and with selecting the postal service layer, I'm going to choose a brush I'm going to choose this edge brush and at first you'll notice you don't see it here now and the reason is because they're really big brushes. I made them big for you so you can use them on all sorts of different sizes of projects. But if I get my left bracket key and click it down, you'll see that it makes it small enough so we can actually see it. And now I'm just going to bring it right to the edge of my work and I'm going to start adding texture. Pretty easy, right? So I'm just going to get all these horizontal lines with the brush. And you can switch between brushes if you want, but for time's sake, I'm just going to stick to this one brush for now. Okay. 
And then to get different angles, there are brushes that fit different angles, but what I like to do is I just like to open up this brush panel and then we can just turn the angle here and for instance, get the sides. And now we want to make sure that we also get the edges here, like around the corners here. And we can do that by doing the exact same thing. I'm just going to re-angle this and get into these corners here. Now you'll notice like right here, we have a line now because this went into that area, but we'll take care of that in a minute. So don't worry about that. Now there are retro supply brushes that will get into these corners like really easy without having to adjust angles, but you don't really need them. You can do it this way. And actually I like doing it this way sometimes. Okay, awesome. So now we've got all our edges for the most part. Now another thing we might want to do is we might want to add some texture to the inside here. And that's why I've given you this rubber stamp brush that you can use for instance. And you can get this. And again, I'm going to shrink it down with my left bracket key. And we could just add like some subtle texture to the actual inside here and kind of gives it this stamp like feel to it. And I'm going to do the same thing to this eagle. So I'm selecting the eagle on the layer mask and I can start adding some texture to this guy too. Nice. And I also have a brush in here that I included. I think I should just mention real quick. That kind of gives you like those, these like distressed folds that you find in old material that's been sitting forever somewhere. And I got this from like a 1950s guitar book. It was pretty cool. So you could like add those in as well if you wanted. And it looks kind of like that, that kind of stuff. So step five is to add the finishing touches. This is where we're going to clean it up. We're going to add like a little bit of a yellowing to the paper um, and maybe like sharpen up some of the textures a little bit if we decide to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get just a plain round brush here. And I'm just going to clean up where some of these lines are going a little bit crazy. So to do this, we need to reverse this because remember black conceals and white reveals. Now we want to reveal where like these lines are so we can get rid of them. So we'll make sure we have this mask selected. And then I'm just going to get rid of some of this. And I might lower the opacity and flow here a little bit. And when you're doing this, you might have to go back and add like some of that like grain texture again so it doesn't look too clean. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to waste your time going into all those details. I think you probably get what I mean. Just you have to go back and add the textures again sometimes. We're just getting rid of like obvious looking errors where it was just the brush being a little sloppy. Oftentimes you'll want to do this on lettering. For most projects you want your lettering to be readable. So you want to make sure that the brushes haven't totally just destroyed anything that people need to read. And you'll notice I didn't add much texture to any of this because I really wanted to make sure that it was readable. And then we might want to yellow the paper a little bit. So we can just go down to the bottom layer and then we go to create new filler adjustment layer and then just do a solid color. And then I like to get just like a yellow layer because as the cellulose and paper ages, it yellows slightly unless it's been specially chemically treated, um, which most inexpensive papers haven't, and they do yellow. So we'll be a little more dramatic with the color since we're doing a tutorial so you can really see what's happening. So then, now this looks kind of funny because like you can see all these whites and you're like, why is that white? So we go to this layer now and we are going to select multiply. And all of a sudden it looks awesome. So that in a nutshell is how to add textured edges to your work. Now really quickly, I want to give you an extra tip and I want to tell you where you might get stuck. Where you might get stuck or you might make like little mistakes is in the details. So be sure to go back and do some cleanup work to make sure that you're not going over the top or you're not covering up lettering or like we had, you're not having, you know, one of these edge brushes, the line going through the middle of something else and just looking sloppy. So you want to clean that stuff up and that's where you might get stuck and also you need to angle your brush like we showed with the angling to make sure you get into certain areas. So 
that takes a little more time. It might feel like you have to like do a lot of tweaking to get into those areas, but trust me, it's worth doing. Spend that little extra time doing it. It's actually pretty fun, so don't skip over doing that. So that is the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon.